If you've watched my custom car audio videos here on this channel, you know that I like to use the router a lot. The versatility of having so many different router bits to work with that can do different things makes this one of the most powerful tools in my shop. So when it comes to picking a router, I need the best. Now for the longest time, the Porter Cable 890 series has been my go-to router. With its soft start motor and full-time electronic feedback, along with adjustable speed control, this router has been perfect for my application. But unfortunately, late in 2020, the news broke that Porter Cable would no longer be making routers. So it's time to find a replacement and the Porter Cable has left big shoes to fill. So does this router from Bosch have all the important features that I think are important for a router, especially when it comes to car audio use? Let's find out. Now real quick, before we get into opening up this router and taking a look, I do want to say a thank you to our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. Having great tools is super important for custom car audio, but so is having great wiring. New Concepts has a wide variety of different wires, but my favorite for power and ground is the Colossus Flex cable. This oxygen-free copper wire is fine strand and extremely flexible. Car manufacturers don't leave as much room under the carpet for running wires anymore, so this stuff being so flexible is very handy for hiding it underneath. I've got all this wiring ready to go in this box for my F-150 project I'm currently working on in the channel. To learn more about new concepts, check out the link down below. Let's get the new Bosch opened up and see what they include in the box. In this first bag, we have warranty information, the instruction manual, and then we've got the collet wrenches here. There's the two different sizes. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. They give us this Allen key on a T-handle. This is critical. I'm definitely gonna talk more about what this is. And they give us some various hardware for mounting the different mounting plates and jigs onto the router. Looks like another bag down in here. This is going to be one of our two collets. I'm assuming the other collet is loaded on the router. And then last but not least, we've got the router itself along with the base. So we have our new Bosch router here, and then of course we're making some comparisons to the old Porter Cable 890 series router, so I've got that along with some of its accessories here. Now right off the bat, spec-wise, these routers are the same. They are both two and a quarter horsepower, and they are both 12 amp motors. Both of these motors have a soft start technology and they both have feedback circuitry. That feedback circuitry, when you're pushing a workpiece through the router bit, it allows it to maintain a constant speed on the bit even when the router is under load. And that feature, in my opinion, is why I like these particular routers so much. It's one of those things that you don't really understand until you kind of use it for the first time. It's super nice. It's not going to bog down when you're putting a large router bit into a larger piece of material. They maintain that power and allow you to make a nice smooth buttery cut. As far as speed adjustment goes, the new Bosch router gives us a little bit more flexibility. We have from 8,000 RPM up to 25,000 RPM. And on the Porter Cable, we had a little bit less, 10,000 up to 23,000. Now, honestly, I don't really see that as a huge value. I never really had any issues with not being able to use the correct speed using this router because you're controlling the feed rate through the router anyhow. But one thing I do find a little bit frustrating with the Bosch model here is it just has a power value. So one is probably going to be your lowest speed. So that's 8,000 RPM. And then six would obviously be your highest speed. Whereas on the Porter Cable, they actually told us what it was so you could approximate more your speed. Again, I don't think this is a huge deal because especially in the table mounted application, I would usually leave this around 20,000 RPM and be good to go. I'll probably do the same on this. I don't really touch the speed adjustment all that often but it is something to note. Another important thing to look at here on the Bosch router, in order to turn it on and off, we just have the switch up here. And what was nice about the Porter cable is you could turn the switch on up here, or if you notice down below, when I'm adjusting up here, see that moving up and down? That's because you could have your hand still holding the router and turn it off down here. That was also a really nice feature for if you're using this in a handheld application. Again, not a huge deal to me because I'm just gonna be taking the motor out of the base and using it in a table application, but definitely worth noting. As far as the handles go, if you're using this in a handheld application, I don't see a huge difference in the ergonomics of each of these handles. They both feel good in the hand. 
I don't think there's any real notable difference there. If we flip the routers over, this clamp on both of the routers feels pretty nice. It is not that hard to undo, and both routers give us the ability to quickly adjust up and down with a different retention tab if need be. Both routers give us increments on this dial here so we can know how much we're adjusting by, but I do like on the Bosch router here, they also add in this little adjustment location here where you could see about how far you are adjusting the base and thus bringing the bit further out of the base that doesn't really exist on the Porter cable. Now I mentioned earlier how excited I was to see that they included this tool with the new Bosch router. What does this tool do? Well, the Porter cable has a similar tool that accomplishes the same thing here. And one of the reasons that I feel like both of these routers are so valuable for those of us that are doing car audio is 99% of the time when I'm using a router, it's in a table mounted application. In other words, it's like this, it's mounted into a table, I'm working above the surface here. What's nice for those of us that might be on a budget and we're just starting to get into custom car audio is we can get a nice versatile router and we can build this into our own router table without getting a router lift. So what do I mean by that? I could essentially just cut a hole in a board. I could use these three mounting screws to mount the router to the underside of the board. I could have that board between a set of sawhorses and now I have a makeshift router table. But the biggest thing is when you have a router table table like that, it can be a pain to adjust the router up and down unless you have this feature. With this, what we could do is we could simply reach below our table, and of course we'd always want this in its locked position whenever we're using the router. We would reach below the table, we would unlock this, which is simple enough to do, and then check this out. From above the table, we can put this in and we can adjust the router up and down. The reason I was excited to see this included with the Porter cable is it allows for that same functionality. We can adjust our base really easily from above the table. Now, if you didn't know this, some router bits will have a quarter inch shank size and some will have a half inch shank size. So both of these routers, the Porter cable came with different collets to allow us to use those different shank sizes and so does the Bosch. Both routers, of course, also give us the wrenches that allow us to tighten and untighten these collets. And I will say, obviously a little bit more simple on the Porter cable here, these are definitely a little bit nicer on the Bosch. Now, many of you watching this video may be like me. You may have multiple different routers set up, and right now, all of these are the same router. They're all that Porter cable model, which allows me to use the same wrenches because they all use the same collets. And unfortunately, when I go to replace this router motor here with the Bosch, they are a slightly different collet size, so I'm going to have to make sure that I have access to the different collet wrenches. The last thing I wanna compare here before I move on to mounting my motor in the router table is I wanna compare the bases here. The Porter cable, in my opinion, is kind of the industry standard when it comes to this mounting plate on the bottom. That's what a lot of aftermarket accessories will use so that you can mount them to the bottom of the router. I'm curious if this router has that same capability. At first glance, it doesn't really seem like it does, but let's take this plate off first. So I'll be honest, I was bracing myself for a little bit of disappointment. I was fully expecting to take that plate off the bottom and not see these mounting holes. I'm extremely excited to see that they included those three mounting holes because as you guys know, in custom car audio, we cut a lot of circles. So in the handheld application, this is what I'll use the router for a lot of times for cutting out holes in a subwoofer enclosure, for making speaker rings. This allows us to use the Mobile Solutions Perfect Circle, or we could also use the Jasper circle guide. To see how the router performs, I do want to get it installed into this lift here on my three bay router table. So I'll take the old lift up out of the table and I'll follow the steps to get this new motor installed. I've got the Porter cable motor removed out of the lift and the great thing about the new Bosch router is both of these motors have the same diameter. They're both three and a half inch motor diameters. So if you did have the Porter cable from before and you were replacing it, it's good that we have the same consistent size. The lift can be adjusted. That's why it has all these different mounting holes for different sizes of routers. But now I don't have to adjust anything. I can just quickly swap this in. So here it is, we've got the new Bosch router mounted in the lift. And if you're not familiar with a router lift, the advantage of this is I can make much more refined adjustments and I can raise and lower 
this out of the table very quickly by just using a drill. I'm gonna raise it up out of the table so we can get our first router bit loaded in because I wanna run it through its paces. We're just gonna do a quick little test sample. This is a quarter inch bit, so we're gonna use that quarter inch collet, get it loaded on here. I'll put the bit inside the collet and then get things tightened up. I'm using some double-sided template tape to stick this template in position that way it can't move. And that bit that we loaded into the router is a quarter inch flush trim bit. I'm intentionally not rough cutting this MDF because I wanna see if the motor bogs down at all. Let's take a listen. This is three quarter inch MDF and the Bosch motor had no trouble whatsoever cutting through that with our quarter inch flush trim bit. Nice and even perfect looking cut there. So now we need to see though, what if we use a larger bit that is cutting away quite a bit of material all at once. Let's try out this profile bit. Once again, not bogging down at all, no troubles whatsoever. Check out this cool geometry we were able to create with just a couple of steps. This is why I love, 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 love using the router for car audio. I mean, imagine that wrapped in vinyl and as an insert. Imagine if you use that same profile bit around the edge of a subwoofer box or an amp rack, so many different options for creating stuff that's really cool. I've put a link to the Bosch router down in the video description so you guys can check it out. Overall, I think that moving forward, this is going to be a great solution for a woodworking router, especially for us car audio guys. Don't forget next time you need wiring for a car audio build, definitely check out show sponsor New Concepts and their Colossus Flex Cable. Learn more about them down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Anthony, Mike, Ali, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible and thank you guys for tuning in and watching.